Washington has a very bright future ahead. You are Locked On Huskies, your daily podcast on the Washington Huskies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back in to another edition of the Lockdown Huskies podcast. I'm Roman Tomashoff. That's Lars Hansen. He's site editor with Athon Sports is inside the Huskies. I'm the site editor with Huskies Wire. Thank you for making this your first watch or first list of the day as we are part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get Started, Lars, we got a really fun show coming out all the everyday today. Big recruiting show on this Monday. We're going to talk about the two top 100 prospects that were on campus from the 2025 class against UCLA. I was going to say versus UCLA, but that's just me reading off the thing over there. Uh, 2026 wide receiver Terrence Sarian announced his commitment to Washington on Saturday. We love that one. But we were like, hey, we're going to take a day off. We're going to get to it on the Monday show. So sorry, Terrence, for not doing a bonus show. We love his film. We're really excited to get into that. We're going to get there as well. But Lars, we got to start with the very bright future that Washington has because on both sides of the ball, we saw the building blocks that Jed Fish had been talking about all year. We've been waiting to see just all come together is the best way to put it. And it starts obviously with DeMond Williams. Yeah. And again, it's the thing I, again, I, I hazard to say that DeMond was going to play the entire season because our debate before the season was, is he going to get four or more? And it's like, well, he's going to get six. And it's like, are you sure about that? And it's like, this is why, where now we didn't know how the plan was going to come together. And in fairness to Jed, it's been what it can be. It probably could be a little better. It could be, you know, I don't think it'd be worse. Because, again, that was DeMond's best game. Flat out, bar none, full stop. Seven, six to seven, 67 yards, the touchdown to Decker, gets the legs going. And that's the key. And, there's again, it's it's – Recruits are seeing this now. Recruits, is, they've been seeing it, you know, September, October. But I talked to a couple, both the commits, and, and it, everybody is now saying, like, look, this is what like, – everybody's now realizing, look, Jed's kind of – he kind of handcuffed himself this year. And it's not Jed's fault. It's kind of – again, everything is a victim of circumstance. Will was already here. You're not going to throw Will away. Damon, I think when we talk to him next, I would love to know – what does Will help Demon with the most? Because I think we've seen Demon get better each and every game, from a operation standpoint, from a comfortability standpoint. It's not that Demon wasn't going to be capable of doing this, but I think having that veteran presence versus just having Demon and Jed Cook, it's like that could kind of you know go a little bit of different ways. I love that this is kind of been. I know fans don't like it, but I love this because next year there's no reason why Demon can't lead this team to a ten and two record. So I love where you're going with that. I was talking with our, our good buddy, Ben Glassmeyer off the air about that, where it's, the schedule lines up really, really nice. All the tough games are at home. Ohio State's coming to Husky Stadium. Oregon is coming to Husky Stadium. And you look at the road trips, like Michigan, we'll see what they do at quarterback. It's not existent right now. It might be Miller Moss, which would be really funny. But then the other road trips are Wisconsin, Wazoo, and then UCLA and Maryland. So the schedule lines up pretty nice next year. But we're going to get there when we get there. And Lars, one of like the most important thing where there are so many guys we can talk about with this, right? Where we can get into Decker to Graf. We can get into the wide receivers, whether it be Rasheed Williams, Audrick Harris, Jason Robinson, Keith Reynolds. Like there are a whole bunch of guys that you can go down on the offense side of the ball. Adam Muhammad. I don't know how his name is, you know, first coming out of my mouth. Maybe because Jonah Coleman's probably coming back. Or that that might be the reason there. And then you, yeah, you look on defense, the edge rushers, basically all coming back. Kamori House is going to be the centerpiece at linebacker. We know what that's going to look like. But one position that you and I didn't really get to after the game that we saw really hold up and do really well against, you know, admittedly not the best pass rush from UCLA, but we saw Kelly Tafai play well at left tackle. We saw Landon Hatchett succeed on the interior where, you know, and Jay, Jay Toya got his, right? That's, that's a guy who's going to be a very high NFL draft pick, very successful player on Sundays. He still got beat a couple times, just like everybody on the interior did. But, we saw Landon play really well. We've seen him play really well for a couple of weeks now. So you look at pieces like that and then you think, oh, guard memoir is coming back. And then you're going to flip Landon inside the center. Maybe Pocky Fina. We haven't seen him yet. There's, you know, the, obviously the jury's out on a player who hasn't played, but you like the building block there. Whatever else you want to do along the offensive line. Maybe you move Kaylee to somewhere around. Like there's so many different options. But what we know now is that the building blocks are there. 
to be a lot better next year, especially on the offensive line, because that's the one thing that I have a question about outside of defensive tackle, where if you can find ways to shore up those two positions, everything else is in pe- in place for all the pieces to really just have that year two breakout, like 2015, 2016, Chris Peterson. And I'm not saying it's a college football playoffs type run that they might go on, but you're going to see that massive leap forward that it feels like Jed is the first person that if you ask, say, yeah, that's what I'm expecting. And not to push back on anything you think is having great points, but I'm not totally against the playoffs being out of the picture next year because look at what Jed did at the end of last season at Arizona with Arizona. Now again, no Fafita, McMillan, et cetera, et cetera. All the pieces were there for Jed after two or three years. This is why getting those transfers back last, you know, this past January with McCree and, and some of these other guys was so important because now McCree's also coming back. And you had both redshirt freshmen coming back a year with experience. And so you look at it, and I'm glad you mentioned the offensive line. Second game all year that Washington's five offensive linemen have had a 72 or higher PFF grade in pass blocking at the end of the game. Second time. Last time, Wazoo. So you, you, you put that in a little bit of context there. But it, it really kind of shows like they're getting right at the right time. And, again, we're not going to get into two weeks what happens on November 30th because we've got 13 days. We, we got, we got some time there. there. we got about 12 days until we get there. But, but looking into next year when Oregon does come up here, no matter what happens at the end of the season, that could be a game where, okay, maybe Jed drops his first one. Easily could win a second because then you have to look at what Oregon has. Now they're going to break in, you know, their quarterback, and DeMond's already broken in. So that's why this year was kind of Jed's cheat code year. It's like, look, record aside, just get to a bowl game. Because that's basically what we said before the season. Get to a bowl game and get the guy's experience. That's really all that matters. And that's basically what Jed's done this season. And then with some of these guys that can come back, it's like, you know, whether guard comes back or not, who knows? But you still have landed. Then you still have, uh, you know, Zach Henning, who's been a significant right. rep. Also, shout out to Zach Henning's dad for meeting my dad at Penn State. My dad was a little bit confused. He said he was a, met a Penn State family. I couldn't <laughs> find a Zach on the roster, and so, so thank you to Steve for clarifying that yesterday. I kind of, you know, scolded my dad That's a little fantastic. bit. Fantastic. But but no, but there's all these young pieces, and Henning hasn't played a ton this year in terms of you know specific right guard, right tackle reps or those sort of things. But getting game experience, and especially like in a whiteout against UCLA, all these sorts of things, next year now there's no more excuses. Those excuses can't be there next year. Like, oh, well, hey, well, we're still breaking some guys in. Oh, well, it's his, it's his fifth start. It's like, yeah, but he played all 12 games last year. What are we talking about here? Like, that's why this year was a building block. And as frustrating as it is for fans to hear, you still got to a bowl game. Yeah. Could be worse. The practices. Right. Oh, the, the practices, all these things, they all matter. They all matter. And now like we're, we're going to get, get there in a minute, but it all just is what you need going forward because you look at 2025 and you say, all right, you're bringing in some high caliber pieces that, you know, all these, these great schools around the country that are doing exactly, you know, what Washington wants to emulate, what Jed wants to emulate. They're all playing freshmen early. They're all playing these guys young, unless, you know, you're Alabama or Georgia and you have six players at running back ahead of you. And even then Nate Frazier still getting carries at Georgia. Like these, these things are still happening and you want to see that here and you are. And that's really fun. That's really exciting because I look at it and, you know, just to parlay this into next season, because we, we got a lot that we got to get to there where I look at, for example, Dylan Robinson right? The exciting corner prospect from uh, Bonita High School down in California. I look at a guy like that and I say, if that dude enrolls early, that dude gets up here. Why Why can't he do what Kamari House did? Because we saw that. We've seen that it's it's something that is possible with that size, with that frame. I look at Zadrius Rainey Sale in the same light. You know, we, we look at guys that we're going to talk about later on and say, if this guy decides to come to Washington, why does this not, you know, all of a sudden it's that extra boost that you need. The best example I can possibly give this season. Look at what Jeremiah Smith is doing at Ohio State. That dude is on a different caliber of prospect. But in terms of impact, you can find ways to make that impact from young guys that then propel you forward, which is exactly what Jed wants to do. And it's exactly what we've seen so far this season, just not necessarily in the the amount of time that some people might like. But Lars, let's get to the latest commitment because Terrence Sarian is a lot of fun to watch on film. 
right after a message from our friends over at Five Hour Energy, because our friends over at Five Hour Energy know that being a passionate football fan isn't just a hobby, it's a way of life. It takes a lot of energy to power through all day tailgates, touchdown celebrations, or an agonizing second overtime, which is why they've created the Stand the Fan Five Hour Energy Shot with a special flavor called Fan Fuel, the energy shot made just for super fans like us. The fans were first in the parking lot and were last to leave. We see you. You know what else gave me a bit of Husky Fan Fuel this week? When we saw Damon Williams enter the game for the first time, because we saw the offense was playing at a whole different level. It's so much fun to see because we saw the pace and everything that is just so exciting moving forward. Five Hour Energy knows that no matter what team you root for, being a fan requires heart, soul, and a whole lot of energy. Whether you're prepping for the big tailgate or ironing your jersey, your game day to-do list is always a mile long, and that's why the limited edition Stand the Fan Five Hour Energy Shot is here to help keep you fueled throughout the season. What's your fan fuel this week? Whatever it is, do it with a five hour energy. Available on five hour energy.com, shipped nationwide. So, Lars, on Saturday afternoon, 2026 wide receiver Terrence Sarian, three star prospect from Evergreen High School down in Vancouver, became, becomes the fourth player to commit to Washington in the 2026 class. He joins a really fun class that we've seen start to develop. It's got Ansu Sanoe, four star running back from uh, down in Oregon. It's got kicker CJ Wallace. And then we saw Wasi Lolobi commit as well, you know, a week, week and a half ago at this point. And getting Terrence in there, this is a guy who can really take the top off of defense. And can play on any position of wide receiver, not just a slot yeah. guy where I know you know, listed at I think 5'10, 5'11, 165. That's what he told me, 165, 170. Kevin Cummings said, you can play wherever. I do not care. And I think when you look, look at the you kind of think, okay, wait, really? like we're really gonna put that five, five, ten guy outside, and you turn on the tape, and it's like, yeah. oh no, yeah, go for it. Yeah, that's all you, buddy. That's all <laughs> you get your out to the far hash, like get out there. That, and that first play, I'm sorry, that very first play. I wrote about this a little bit over on Husky's Wire as well. That very first play on his huddle for anybody who's went uh went and watched the, the junior tape. It's he is like it's like a 90 plus yard touchdown where it's very clear, like it's a cover three and he splits three defenders. There's an underneath guy, there's the corner on his side, and then there's a like a safety over the top, and he just straight up runs by all three of them. Before he's got the ball in his hands, it just straight up and his quarterback makes a really nice throw to about midfield. But I saw that and I was like, oh, oh yeah. Like I liked his sophomore film. And then I watched this one. And I was like, oh yeah, this is this is a very, very exciting prospect. And I do want to clarify because again, when we, whenever we say speed, you know, you can think of a receiver and think, okay, is he John Ross where he just can run, but it's not really like he also very polished route runner. I think that's yeah. the other side of this equation that's really important when you talk about being slightly undersized at that position. Again, Kevin Cummings, nobody's gonna say he's undersized, but it's just like when you are on the lower side of the height scale on that in that respect, you need to be a crisp route runner. And all of the routes that he runs, I mean. It, I don't know if there's a route in the route tree that you can't run. I'm sure there's probably some that Jed will be like, hey, you know, I got to coach up a little bit here, a little bit there. But that's the point of getting these this type of talent in the room is so that the bar, the the floor of the the floor is down here versus you know down here, like where it's like sure. the talent level. You're raising the talent level up, so it's like, yeah, you're still gonna have to develop, still gonna have to coach them up. But we've seen what they can do with Otto Harris. We've seen what they can do with Jason Robinson in practice. We've seen some of these other guys. You know, Keith Reynolds is another guy where another under. You know, they really kind of. There's like two types of receivers they like, two or three types, right? You got the big 6'3", six, 6'4", six, you know, the Denzel Boston. Just go win you know. the football, yeah. Right. But then you need to have those Giles, Keith, Keith Ronald, uh, Jason Robinson, Kevin Green Jr. When, when he'll be healthy next season because we haven't had a chance to see him this season. But when we saw in practice in fall camp, you can see the progression there. And so you look at the guys that they've offered in the 26th class, and it's like, good. Get this guy in the boat early. Also cousins with Ansu. So, you know, there's a family relation there. but worth noting there that didn't really play a factor now it's not like he doesn't like his cousin or anything like that but sure. it's just like look this was a and just, just to be clear you know it's like obviously it helped but he didn't really there wasn't a lot of talking about it, it was like you know what and to be fair you know what's actually crazy about this he went into that visit and i know you and i kind of want to hear some things wasn't necessarily going to commit yeah wasn't you know was, was leaning washington's way was leaning was certainly this wasn't like an out of the blue drop a bag sort of situation but this was a you know what I'm seeing the fans. I'm seeing the atmosphere. You win the game. And he said it just felt right. And it was one of those where he came up for uh, the June camp, uh, the, the Rising Stars camp, Big Dog camp, whatever they call it now, got the offer from Washington. And that was one where it's like, okay, this seems like a guy where you need to close on early. And this is what's so important. You're not just closing on 25 guys. You're closing on 26 guys early on. 
And he said, yeah, there's a couple schools that might come, but I could care less. And I think that's what's really important for Jed is to get these guys in the boat early because they've really lost, what, one guy, theoretically? Sure. Where let's I, – I want to take this conversation in a different direction because of something when you and I were prepping for the show beforehand. You gave me a great quote. I'm just going to leave it at that until we get there because I want to talk about in-state recruiting. And I, I know you know where I'm going with this. But I – I love this emphasis on in-state recruiting where that was one thing that I know he, uh, Terrence told Brandon Huffman was that, yeah, you know, being from Washington is really cool to be able to say, yeah, you know, I'm playing for my, you know, my, my home state, obviously being from Vancouver, uh, a little bit further South than where we are up here in Seattle, but <laughs> yeah, just a bit, but on top of that, it's, we've seen this whole coaching staff really prioritize the state of Washington. And it's, that's an interesting conversation to have in my opinion. Because we saw the last staff not really do that, where there were there were points in time where it's okay, you know, I understand why they might prioritize. You know, I'm I'm not going to name any names, just player A over player B, right? Like there there are times where you can turn on the film and say, I get it, I understand why you might want to go after a kid that's in California, Arizona, Nevada, maybe whatever, instead of a kid from Washington because you think that he's just going to be that much better for whatever reason. That's it. That's all I'm going to say about that part of it. But at the same point. It feels like this staff has done a lot more of its due diligence up here, as I feel the best way to put it, where you can look at a guy like Terrence, you look at the other 26 guy they have committed and Wasi Lolobi, and you say, those are two top five players in the state. And you look at what the 25 class is, and you got the top two players in the state and they just ran a sale on Jonathan Epperson. You got a couple of really fun building blocks in there as well. Like I think about a guy like Victor Sanchez Hernandez and Lowen Coleman Brusa where you look at players like that on the lower, you know, lower end in terms of the rankings, but you look at their film and you look at their body type and you say, I get where you might be going with that. And Lars, the, the way, the way I want to just tie this all in together and get to what you want to say is in 2026, we know Derek Coleman Bruce is the ultimate prize in state four star edge rusher. Seems like he's down to Washington, Ohio state. And it feels like the way they're trying to sell this to not just him, but to everybody from the state of Washington is you can do all this at home, which was a wonderful point of emphasis that worked very, very well in the Chris Peterson era. And now Chris, the one selling point Chris Peterson didn't have the Jed Fish now does. You don't have to go elsewhere. This is what both recruits told me. And what will kind of tie this together. What Wasi Lobby told me. Back in 2016, 2017, even 21, right, with, with Jimmy Lake and the JTT and Mecca said, Washington was in the Pac-12. You're playing yeah. Cal, Stanford. You're playing ASU, Arizona. You're playing fine, fine institutions. You know, again, Stanford obviously in a class of its own, different reasons, but at, more so academically. But now you're playing the Big Ten. You're playing Penn State. You're hosting Penn State. You're not doing a non-conference game against Penn State where you got to travel to, you know, let, let's call it, the Cotton Bowl when you're playing, you know, a non-conference season opener against Penn State or Ohio State or whatever. No, you're playing these teams week in, week out. You're playing Oregon now in the Big Big Ten. And that matters where it's exactly what Wasi told me where he's, why would you go anywhere else? And especially why would you go to the other side of the country? You just, to be fair, you phrase the other side of the country. This was not directed at any one recruit because, again, sure. mentioning some names here, you know, there was not any direct shot. There's not direct shot. But why would you go to school – a on the East Coast or you know Central or Eastern time zone when you literally have all of that right here and NIL not a problem everything else not a problem coaching clearly not a, I mean we'll see it more so next year but coaching not really a problem Steve Belichick look at what he's done with his defense coming from the NFL no concept of college hasn't you know, didn't really do a lot of college recruiting or scouting when he was with the Patriots because he, he was honest about it. He, look that's this college scouting department I don't really worry about that they just you know kind of tell me yeah. what I need to know. Day one came in and made this a college top, what, 10, 15 defense in the country? Sure, With yeah. Not a, I mean, again, you had Carson, you had Alfonso, but they didn't look like they do this year. And so to tie this all together, the Oregon game in 23 still re, still carries true, where that game really put up, you know, in Wasi's head where it's like, you know what? This is the atmosphere. This is what Washington fans can do. And now you're in the Big Ten. Why go anywhere else? Yeah. And that's a great part of this where 
you think about it from just the other recruiting stuff that we're going to get to as well, where it all starts here on the West Coast because it doesn't just start in Washington or in Oregon, but in California and in Arizona, where, as you and I have said, that's where you want to build this class. That's where you will always want to say, hey, the core of our class is the best talent from the West Coast. Because if you're consistently trying to go into Texas or you're trying to go into, you know, Alabama or Louisiana or Florida, wherever, right? And try to say, all right, we're consistently going to go go try and get the best players out of there. That's just not going to work for you. But when you can supplement great players on the West Coast with one or two of those guys, that's when you're really at your best. That's what Washington can do so well, because we know this is a program that is one of the best in the nation, no matter who is coaching, that will get you to the NFL at a very, very good rate. So no matter what, you will always have that selling point. And again, it starts on the West Coast, but there are some guys from all over the country that are heavily considering Washington. Which we'll get to right after message from our good friends over at FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play by play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch to make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. A couple of fun little just Monday night football things going for you. You can take them however you want. You want to parlay them. That's what I would do. Nico Collins, over in catches, over in yards, anytime touchdown against this really bad Cowboys defense. Plus, Cooper Rush throwing the ball. Not great, but... CD Lamb over in catches. You parlay all those together. You should go check out all those odds over on FanDuel. We also got a message from our good friends over at Game Time because Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters up the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats. You don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets, which is great news if you want to check out the Husky basketball team. Lars and I love what's happening under Danny Sprinkle. Going to be a lot of good tickets available. You should go check those out. Seahawks games, Kraken games, all the best deals are over. Over on Game Time, because of Game Time picks, curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and so much more. With their all-in pricing, you can toggle this feature, and it shows the total upfront with no surprise fees at checkout. And with their lowest price guarantee, Game Time will credit you with 110% of the difference. You can find a lower price somewhere else. You can take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time picks. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L. L-E-G-E for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Lars, you and I were roaming the sidelines on, on Friday before the game, as as you and I love to do, even though it actually wasn't, it wasn't as cold as I think we were expecting it to be, which was wonderful. But there were some star-studded names on the sidelines. You and I were expecting Andrew Marsh to be there. We'd heard about that one. We sent a note about about it over to our Lockdown Huskies insiders, which is really cool. Uh, but he wasn't the only one. There were some big-time names in the 2026 class, like uh, Ken Pepe, who's a uh, tackle out at IMG, top 20 player in 247 sports rankings in the 2026 class. But we're focused on 2025 right now. Jed isn't. Jed's focused on it all, which is great. That's his job. Our job is to start with 2025 because signing day is a couple weeks away. And we saw Andrew Marsh there. Donovan Lubade was also one of the players from IMG that made an unofficial visit. And Lars, I, I don't know about you, but taking six wide receivers in a class would be really interesting if you can find a way to get them both. But at the same point, if Kevin Cummings closes this class down by getting Andrew Marsh and Donovan Lubade, who's committed to, they're, they're committed to Michigan and Missouri respectively. I, I think that might be the best wide receivers class in the country. Oh, hands down. And the thing is, there's depth and difference in the class. You're not getting a bunch of the same guys. You're getting a ton of different types of skill sets where you go from Denzel Roba to Rain Vinesbride to, you know, Olamode and, and Marsh if they choose to, you know, sign with Washington. The thing that, you know, kind of goes for me is it's something Jed's always said where you can never have enough good wide receivers. And when you look at what's yep. happened this season, I still wonder what the deal, you know, what, why Jeremiah Hunter has been able to get as involved as he is, as he could have been. 
It's a different discussion for a different day. But it talked when you talk about building for the long term of the program. You want to re- you want to replace the three horsemen from last year? You got two thirds right there. And yep. you know, and, and then now you talk about Denzel coming back. There's some other pieces that came back, Audrey, like Rashid. And then you put Jamond at quarterback. And Adam Muhammad yeah. and Jordan Washington or Jonah Coleman at running back. Like that offense. Plus Decker to draft a tight end. Right, right, Woo. exactly. And, and, and probably Baron Aona and Quentin Moore somewhere in there in some respect. Charlie Kroll, you know, coming off the ACL. Don't want to put any expectations on that. But just, you know, there's all those pieces coming back. Yeah. Those pieces are just not – it's just not there this year. And it's no fault to Jed. It's no fault to the players who are executing the offense right now. But that's why you go and get six receivers. And so you can say, look, you know what, we might need to, you know, kind of stagger the class out. But if you're Jed, it's better to load up in your first and second class than this say, hey, you know, let's just take one of these, let's take five receivers, four receivers in this class and try and get three or four in 26 and 27. It's like, no, 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 no. We don't know what's happening in 26, 27. I don't really care. I mean, no offense to the guys that right. we just talked about in the 26 class, but more, more so the 27 class. Right? Whereas, like, look, let's get the talent in the room as quick as yeah. possible. And you talk about, you know, Missouri lost to South Carolina. So that's another one where um, Luther Burton – Kind of had some interesting usage in the past couple of games, and especially against South Carolina. Now Shane Beamer, shout out. Shane had interesting Beamer, so. usage all season long, man. I again, I, I I'm a fan of the OC down there, so I'm not going to throw stones. But that you know is neither here nor there. Uh, I'm not saying you are. I'm just I'm not going to no, go down that rabbit hole because I like Kirby. Yeah. But but that's beside the point. But for me, it's like when you look at what Washington's been able to do. Is there who you you know? It's kind of the same selling point where it's like okay, Denzel is the leading receiver in the Big Ten, but everybody else is kind of like you know you're fighting for scraps in a way where it's like, well, how much of that is a byproduct is just the situation going on. And I think that's why when you're talking about who can develop you, that's how they got McMillan. Think right. about that two, two three years ago. It's like you beat up Oregon for him at Arizona. So that's exactly how I want to parlay this. Cause this is another thing I wrote about over on Huskies wire. It's Kevin Cummings loves to just come in and drop the hammer right away because in his first year he said, all right, yeah, I'm flipping to Tyrone and feeling on signing day. Look at what we did, what he did with him. That's fantastic. You know, fantastic job with that. And now it's, I'm going to do this again my first year at Washington because then, you know, it's not necessarily, hey, I need to go take, like you can, like, let's be real. If he takes six receivers in this class, somehow finds a way to get both of them. With Terrence Sarian already committed, you don't need to go get another receiver in that class. You don't. Because you look at these guys and it's not necessarily you can hang your hat and stop recruiting, but it's, Look at, you wanted all the young talent. You say, I want to build something here for the foreseeable future. That's how you do it. And I want to take this discussion in a different direction. This says so much about Washington's recruiting strategy. Not, not, and not just the recruiting strategy, but the recruiting as a whole under Jed. If, even if you're able to pull off a flip for one of these guys, that just says, Hey, We're willing to play ball with the big boys. You can take that however you want. I'm just going to leave it at that. You can take that whatever way you want in terms of this is how it's going to get done. We know that Michigan is offering $10 million to Bryce Underwood to flip. We know that. So you can take that however you want take it. But you look at it and you just say, hey, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to establish ourselves by taking, you know, somebody from the SEC or we're going to take somebody from one of our conference rivals. Okay, go for it. Like, you want to talk about the best recruiting class in history. You know, losing Vander Plug sucked. If Staskowski does flip to Oregon, that would be tough. That would be really tough. But all of a sudden, if you're flipping a top 100 kid who's committed to Michigan that's from Texas, hey, man, I you know, I love to have a strong offensive line, but that's a fine trade by me. Like, that, I am more than okay with that trade off. Well, and in a way, Let's be real. Offensive lineman, I, I, it's a crapshoot, but it's almost like you'd rather try and go find a portal help in that respect. Now, I'm not saying you want to because, again, you do want to develop those guys. But if you really need Absolutely. to get a one-off extra, you might as well go get some guy with experience. Right? We've seen Max, Enoch. Like, look at those guys. You can easily find at least one or two experienced guys. They might not be the best. You have to coach him up a little bit. Maybe some other school drops yeah. the ball or whatever. I mean, geez, Ohio State dropped the ball on Enoch. I mean, he's been a starter and Hasn't been perfect by any stretch. I'm not saying he's going to, you know, win the Outland Trophy or anything like that, but he's certainly been south, you know, serviceable as a, as a starter at right guard the entire season and sure. filling in at left. But yeah, but you need the talent outside, like Demond, like that. And here's the thing: those guys that when you have the skill talent, that's going to attract the big boys in the trenches. 
where you look at that and say, okay, if I'm protecting Devon, I'm, I'm, I'm blocking for Adam, I'm blocking for Jonah, these guys are the receivers. Right. Look at the line last year. So I, I, I love where you're going with that. I just, so I, I had a different thought process. It was something that I was thinking about and I've been trying to formulate my thoughts on this throughout the entire episode because it's something I'm, I'm really curious about. It's, and it's more of like a long-term thing. But when I think about what, it's something, a, a question you've asked Jed is, hey, what do you want your identity to be here? I think that just this push for both of these guys with everybody you already have committed, but just saying, Hey, we still want to go find a way to take both these guys. Cause we know how much they love Desmond Roebuck. Who's not necessarily the highest rank recruit. You and I are huge fans of Deji, Deji Jose. We love Raiden Vines, right? Chris Lawson is an awesome playmaker. You look at all those guys and you say, okay, this might not make sense in terms of the numbers, but I look at it and I say, this is Jed saying, Hey, my philosophy because we're a big 10 team is not going to change. You are going to have to defend it. What obviously in his words here, one of the country's best passing attacks, because that's what we're going to be. We're not going to just completely change our strategy and say, Hey, we see Michigan coming in here with a bad quarterback and trying to run the ball 50 times a game on us. We see Iowa doing that. We see Rutgers doing that. That's not what we're going to be. We are going to continue to try to run the football effectively with Jonah, with Adam, with all these other guys. But at the same point, we're going to spread you out because let's, let's be real here, Lars. How many teams in the big 10 have we seen this season can legitimately spread out a defense and make them defend every blade of grass? In my opinion, when everything is going right, there are four, maybe five. I would say Ohio state, Penn state, when things are going well, drew Aller, we saw that. And then there's Washington. USC and Oregon. I think that's it. Yeah, I agree. I was gonna say when you when you phrased that, I was like, you talk about that Washington has played or that Washington, you know, that is in the big no, just, I, I, yeah. Oh, you know what? Oh no, give me one more. I'll give one more because you know everything that he's he's done there uh Ty Fenton. Uh Maryland too. Maryland's done a good job of that. But I think when you talk about depth, it's really Ohio State and Washington. Like, let's just be real here. Sure. USC has some nice receivers, Zachariah Branch, obviously. Um, Evan Stewart at okay. Oregon, obviously. You know, again, call it what it is. Ter- you know, uh, Fenton at Maryland, cool one off. How many can go five deep? It's Ohio State right. and Washington. Like that's what Jed is trying to build to. And when you have Ohio State coming next year, you're gonna have Jeremiah Smith. Oh. You're gonna have I can't think of all the guys that Ohio State has, but that's what Brian Hartline does. Is he just turns out dudes. You get five Absolutely. sharp, five sharp, five sharp. That's what you have to match up against. Uh, we're omitting Oregon on purpose from this discussion right away. I, I, I've never heard of anybody by the name of DeCorey and Moore. I'm just not going to go down that. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't even register. Yeah, I didn't no, no, I, 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 because that was good enough. <laughs> no, I, I, hey, I, I get it. This is a Washington podcast, right? But uh, no, that, that's. I think that's a fantastic way for us to wrap this one up because Lars, there are a lot of great things coming on the recruiting trail from what you and I have heard. That this is this is just getting started under Jed, and the best way for our everydayers to keep up with that is check out our Lock and Huskies Insider program. It's down in the description below. You get a free two-week trial, and after that, it's $4.99 a month. We're dropping everything we're hearing on the recruiting trail. It's an easy way, and it goes right to your text message inbox. So it's a super easy way for you to keep in touch with us. We're going to be doing some Q&As that you're only going to find as a member of the program. We put them on YouTube, and you can just ask us whatever question you want. You're hearing something. You want to hear what we have to say, all that. We love doing it for you. Again, free two-week trial. At that, it's $4.99 a month. The link to sign up is down in the description below. And if you like everything we have to offer, please make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Whether that's YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music. We're there. We're everywhere. We're updating the channel through content every single day. So make sure you click that like button, click that little bell so you don't miss we post a new video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop them right down below in the comments section. And if you're audio only, please leave us five-star reviews. It does help us out a lot. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll talk to you on Tuesday.